For almost a year now, single people looking for love have had to field an, yes, I'm going to say it, unprecedented dating landscape. But for as much as we use the word unprecedented, global pandemics are in fact precedented, the most comparable being the deadly 1918 flu pandemic. It's difficult to imagine what surviving a pandemic without technology would be like, but somehow people did it in 1918. Through newspaper clippings and historical anecdotes, we can take a look at what love was like during an era with no modern convenience or technology. While a lot has changed, some things have stayed the same. Laura Spinney, journalist and author of Pale Rider, The Spanish Flu of 1918 and How It Changed the World. You know, I think we're fairly safe in saying that people's lives were turned upside down. Mm -hmm. But it was also an unusual time because there was this pandemic and the war, and so it's difficult to disentangle the effects of those two. Furthermore, people didn't talk about their emotions the way they do today. We know there is widespread trauma, but it's difficult to obtain data on this wave of depression, or melancholia as they would have referred to it, because people didn't come forward. Some of the most vulnerable were between 20 and 40, the prime years for starting and growing a family, but also for going off to war. Letters from soldiers fighting overseas also detail the same pandemic that was ravaging their families back home. Children were orphaned, people became desolate. Romance was not top of mind. So uh, one of the most vivid stories that I came across when I was actually in Odessa then, and I came across this account of a black wedding. A black wedding is a Jewish ritual considered blasphemous by that time, but as an indication of how afraid people were, they got permission to do it uh, from the chief rabbi and from the city authorities. And basically the idea is that you marry two people who are considered marginal in society, who don't know each other, you marry them to each other in a cemetery. And you throw a huge party and the community raises funds and they lavish these two people with gifts and they put on a huge feast and a party and, and this act is supposed to protect the community against the plague. Just as some utilize plastic hugging walls to simulate closeness with loved ones today, newspaper clippings show that those in 1918 didn't do much different. There was a doctor, he was, I think he was the commissioner of health, Royal F. Copeland. And he advised against kissing except through handkerchief. In the 1920, there was an article about a kissing screen, okay? And couples could place the screen between their lips for safety. In 1919, a mayor of one of the cities in the US, he said, we will now give you an opportunity to kiss your sister. There's no anti-kissing ordinance. And if there was, the mayor is not disposed of at this time to think it would be enforced. So basically, he turned a blind eye to the to a section when 800 soldiers uh, returned from uh, after World War One. Spinney described a real life example of how people risk the flu to attend Charlie Chaplin's latest movie. The flu spurred on a global game of musical chairs, where lives, communities, and societies were reshuffled. A carnival that was held in Rio in 1919, which was the carnival that had attracted the most people up to that day. The theme was divine punishment. It Something strange happened at that carnival. It looks as if it turned on the night of, of Carnival Saturday, it became uh, something like an orgy. It's as if all, all the usual inhibitions just went out the window. It's difficult to grasp what the full human experience was in the wake of the 1918 pandemic. This is a detriment, both in terms of knowing our history and learning from it. We can't look to the post-1918 period as a blueprint either. Access to these glimpses of the influenza, however, show that humanity hasn't changed much in a century. We still yearn for love, and we still want to kiss, even through a mesh screen.